there's no line defining before and after my accident. In my mind, it's just one continuous path. I was running before my accident, and I'm still running. Maybe just in a slightly different way. Number of days in ICU, 42. Number of days on a ventilator, 32. Fastest time for getting dressed is 2 minutes 41. Fastest time to get in the car is 1 minute and 18 seconds. Number of international marathons, I've won 3. My time for the full Ironman, 13 hours and 24 minutes. It's now been 10 years and 6 months since I became C6 quadriplegic. C6 quadriplegic means that you're completely paralyzed from your nipples down. You only have limited arm function. I don't have any triceps, I don't have any finger or hand movement. I only have wrist extension, biceps and shoulders. I'm the first squad in the world to do Ironman. For Ironman triathlon, I have to make the able body cut of times. You have to almost train like an able body pro Ironman athlete would train. So I spent about 40 hours on training per week. I always have numbers when I train in my head. People think I've got an obsession with numbers. I time silly things like getting dressed, 2 minutes and 41 seconds, how long it takes me to get in and out of the bath. I've gone under 5 minutes from getting in the bath and then out again. Time myself getting out of the car and up the lift to my work office. I'm actually an actuarial analyst. I work with numbers on a daily basis. It's like I'm a double agent leading a double life. Doing numbers by day at work, but doing numbers when I'm doing sport, doing numbers when I'm just getting dressed. You know, it hasn't even sunk in that I actually managed to do that Ironman. It's 3.8 kilometers swimming in the sea, followed by 180 kilometers on the bike, which I cycle on the hand cycle. And then it's a full marathon running, which is 42.2 kilometers, and I do that in the racing chair. Despite being the first squad in the world to finish Ironman, I would still say something that ranks even higher than that is becoming completely independent. I'm one of the fortunate few that has the sports structure and financial means to be able to carry on and live a full life and a quality life. You know, there's been a lot of research in spinal cord injuries and finding a cure for it. The big reason that I would like to see a cure is not for myself. It's actually for the other guys out there. I see how they struggle with depression for years. Some never get over the fact that they're in a wheelchair. It saddens me to see those guys, and I hope that I'm an inspiration for them. In the end, you know, if there's a cure for spinal cord injuries, you know, that will just fix everything. A lot of people think there must be days where it just gets too much or it just gets too hard. The moment my mind just wants to think things are too much, I just realize what impact I make on a daily basis. One man can make a difference. I often get told, you know, that I got a second chance at life. I disagree with that. In some cases, I actually feel like I was born to be a quad. The day my accident happened, there was no mistake. I made certain choices on that day that got me at the exact time and place for that car to hit me and me breaking my neck. I don't look back because it is what it is. And I'm hoping the way I'm living my life now as a quadriplegic uh, is an inspiration um, to all out there. You know, for me, this is not the end and neither is it the beginning. I'm still following the same path.